The Tesla Model Y is the best selling car in the world right now. And when I tell people that, when they're like, you know, asking me what it's like to own a Tesla, the response is always the same, but that's just out of electric cars, right? To which when I inform them, no, that's out of all the cars, they normally follow up with, well, what's so good about it? So I figured let's discuss 10 reasons why you should buy a Tesla Model Y in 2024. And one really big reason why you shouldn't at the end. So the first reason to buy a Tesla Model Y, the price, which is probably the biggest deciding factor for most. Starting at $43,990 for the rear wheel drive, $48,990 for the long range, and $52,490 for the performance. You have different options to choose from while at the same time not being overwhelmed by just a plethora of options like you can be from some other manufacturers. Have you seen how many trims they make of like a Corolla nowadays? Not to mention that every trim also qualifies for the entire $7,500 tax credit, assuming you qualify, which is taken off of all the just mentioned prices at the time of delivery. That means a new Model Y can be had for around $35,000, putting it right in line with other SUV crossovers, such as the RAV4, the Honda CRV, or the Nissan Rogue, all of which technically do MSRP a little bit cheaper at around 30,000, but have fun getting one of those for MSRP. Some of you all may know this, but if you don't, I live in the town that Toyota produces two thirds of the RAV4, the others being built in Canada, and not even the people building the cars can get them for MSRP. And I mean, I guess another reason to buy a Model Y, this is not really on the list, but you don't gotta deal with dealer markups and price gouging. The price that Tesla says on their website is the price you're gonna pay. But getting back on topic, the tax credits don't stop at just the 7,500 federal, as some states offer an additional tax credit at the state level. Colorado offers $5,000. So make sure you're checking your state incentives. Now, while we're on the topic of cost, the next reason, the after cost cost or maintenance cost. I recently did a video going over some hidden expenses related to Tesla where I broke down from the Tesla manual, the maintenance. And while it's not zero, like some hardcore EV fans would have you believe, it's pretty darn close to zero. In the three years that I've owned my Tesla, I've rotated the tires up few times and that's about it. Now, the third reason to buy a Model Y here in 2024, it's versatility. With up to 76 cubic feet of cargo space or the ability to option a third row for passengers, over 300 miles of range with the long range and a 4.80 to 60, which can be cut down to 4.3 if you opt for the acceleration boost. So you got range and you got performance. You want cargo space or do you want an extra row? Not to mention, you can also get a tow hook for up to 35 500 pound towing capacity. You'd be surprised how many people you'll see with trailers on the back of their Model Ys. Name me another SUV that can do all that at that price point while also having access to the Tesla supercharger network. Spoiler alert, you can't. And while we're on the topic of the supercharging network, that's reason number four to own a Model Y. Prior to pretty much every automotive maker bending the knee to Tesla's supercharger network, I would always see legacy automotive EV commercials claiming that you could charge on the nation's largest network with their electric vehicles, which technically is or was true due to CCS, but it didn't matter because they never worked. There are over 50,000 superchargers, and out of the hundreds that I've been to, I've always been able to charge without problem within a reasonable amount of time. However, out of the four or five Electrify Americas I've been to, half of them were down or half the chargers were down or they just, like the entire site didn't work. I've been on multiple thousand plus mile road trips without a problem and I even have some of them documented here on the channel that you can check out. The car tells you where to stop, for how long, it auto preconditions your battery for faster charging, it tells you when to unplug, how busy the charge will be, if there's an open space, if there's a wait, how long the wait is, everything you need to know. It just tells you right on the screen. And while yes, the supercharger network is opening up to other manufacturers, you're either gonna have to pay the higher prices versus if you owned a Tesla, or you're gonna have to buy a pass and pay a monthly fee to get the lower prices. And to be honest with you, I just don't see a point. Like, yes, there's other great EV SUVs coming out, but I like you, you might as well just get the Tesla if you're already using the supercharger network. It just 
That's what makes the most sense to me. Now, another little bonus reason here to buy a Model Y is because of all the accessories. And while you can get super crazy with things like rotating screen mounts and interior RGB lighting kits, if you're just looking for the must-have essentials, well, I'd recommend some floor mats, a screen protector, and maybe some inserts. I'll have the ones that I have linked down below. And don't forget that you can use code YouTube, all caps, for 10% off your entire order from Test Stuff. We don't want your email to give you 10% off. We're just gonna give you 10% off as a thank you for watching the video. And while the supercharger network is leading the pack in public charging, an even bigger reason to buy a Model Y home charging. Yes, this is less Model Y specific and more EV specific, but if you're coming from a gas car, well, then this includes you if you're looking at buying a Model Y. I still have a gas car in my household. It's the Ladies Daily, and it's very rare we take it when we go out together. But the other day we did. And to be honest with you, I had completely forgotten about gas stations. I still know what they are and I still loosely keep up with prices. But the whole having to stop and take like five to 10 minutes out of your day to just fuel up your car feeling was almost nostalgic to me. I had just forgotten that that was something that you needed to think about regularly and stop and do one to two times a week. I wake up every day with a full tank. And I know that some people think that it's actually the other way where fueling up is super easy and you don't think about it, but no, it's, it's not at all. The best way I can describe charging at home is like charging your phone. It takes you three seconds to plug it in and then you just forget about it. You wake up and it's ready to go. Plus, and the real upside, it's cheap. It cost me roughly six cents per kilowatt hour to charge at home. So a little under $5 with an 82 kilowatt hour battery to fully charge my car. And I'll get around my rated range for like three fourths of the year, which is a 300 ish miles. I'm paying like a penny and a half per mile I travel. Cheap at home charging and waking up every day with a full tank, never having to leave a little early to stop and get gas or think about getting gas on your way home from work when you're super tired is seriously like two of the biggest advantages to buying a Tesla Model Y. Like you, you don't realize how nice it is until you have it. Now, this next reason is never at the top of people's priority list, but it probably should be, especially if you're gonna be hauling your family around the safety rating. Five stars across the board. The Model Y is one of, if not the safest vehicles on the planet. I think we've all seen those crazy accidents where people shouldn't have walked away, walked away because they were in a Model Y, or just any Tesla for that matter. They all have great safety ratings. If you haven't read up on why the Model Y is so safe, I highly recommend you do. But some key points are crumple zones in the front and the rear. It has the largest single casting in the world, fortified battery pack, and a low center of gravity, leading to the lowest rollover risk of any SUV at just 7.9%, which when I heard that, I actually thought that was wrong because I've never seen a Model Y rollover. I've never seen a Model X rollover. I think I've seen a Tesla upside down like maybe one time. You just never see these cars roll. Plus all these software related safety features. And the craziest part is that while Tesla does advertise the safety rating, it's never at like the forefront. The car just has so many things going for it that it being one of the safest cars on the road is kind of just a bonus. Now, what comes after safety? Well, in my head, security. And the Model Y, once again, has you covered. You should not be driving around in today's world without a dash cam. But the only problem is, well, all dash cams kind of suck. All dash cams besides the one built in from Tesla, that is. You got six cameras all going at once, recording everything, everywhere you go, when you're parked, you can view them live, you're always covered. The best dash cam is the one that's always recording. I can't tell you how many times I've seen posts of people thanking and praising the Tesla cam feature for being there to prove that they either weren't in the wrong or at fault in the event of an accident. I've shown people like sentry mode footage like directly on my car or maybe just dash cam footage that I've saved. And they always ask me, where can they buy that? Like buy the cameras to put on their cars. And I just got to link them to tesla.com. I would bet that because this has become such a useful features and owners want to be protected, that all new cars within the next 10 ish years will come with some form of dash cam that just automatically records from the external cameras. But for right now, it's just Tesla and maybe Rivian. I think 
I think they added that with a software update or something. I, I actually don't know. Now the eighth reason to buy a Model Y, the interior. I've already mentioned cargo space, but now I'm mainly referring to the interior itself. First is the glass and just all that visibility. You have a big windshield that goes super low, allowing for an unobstructed view paired with a gigantic glass roof for tons of light and a great view for your passengers. Any other car I drive now just feels like I'm squinting and I can barely see out the windshield. And we've already discussed the safety rating, so you know that the glass is not a safety concern. And secondly, the minimalist interior, which I know can be subjective, but I personally love it. The less distractions with all these buttons, knobs, and dials everywhere, the better. Now, I'm not gonna lie, a few years back, Tesla did go through a big software update that took a lot of things from being one touch on the screen to two or three touches buried within the settings, but they since addressed all of that. But to be honest, most things that I actually do adjust frequently, like my music volume or, you know, skipping, fast forwarding, rewinding tracks or setting autopilot speed or all on my steering wheel. So I don't even got to take my hands off the wheel. The interior is really designed to just make driving the primary focus, which driving happens to be our next reason to buy a Model Y. I always tell people, unless you're ready to buy do not test drive because the drive alone will get you. There's a reason why Tesla just lets you take the car during a test drive and just go out on your own because they know that the car and the driving experience will sell itself. Instant torque, for example. Describing it is one thing, but experiencing it is something totally different. It is game changing. You need to insert yourself into some traffic? Easy. Someone merging into you? Easy. Not to mention, it makes you feel safer on the road. It's, it's weird to say, but it does. Not having to wait for your car to spool up or to change gears to get up and get going a little bit faster, it's just so nice. And going hand in hand with instant torque, the acceleration. And you don't even need to get the performance model to have good acceleration. You can get the long range, throw on the acceleration boost, and now you're half a second off of what the performance can do. However, if you're going into purchasing a long range knowing that you're gonna buy the acceleration boost, just go ahead and buy the performance you'll kick yourself if you don't, considering right now they're so close in price, especially after you buy the acceleration boost. You pretty much just paid for a performance. The acceleration is great, and three years later, I still find myself doing zero to 60 pulls every few days just for the enjoyment. And lastly, for the driving, one pedal driving. It takes a few drives to get used to, but once you do, you realize how great it really is. I guarantee that if you have to drive a gas car after a few months, that you'll forget to use your brakes initially. My first time driving a gas car was about six or seven months after getting my Tesla, and the first stop sign I about blew right through. Now, for our 10th and final reason to buy a Model Y, the opposite of driving, not driving, or the car driving for you, autopilot. Autopilot takes so much stress off of road trips and long drives. I can pretty much drive all day long with autopilot and not be utterly exhausted by the end of it. Compared to not having autopilot, I'm normally tapping out after about 12 hours. Now, the cool factor of, wow, the car's driving itself and it's driving me isn't really what it was when the Model Y, you know, first came out the three or four years ago, as other automakers now have their own versions of, you know, lane keep and speed assist. But I would still rank normal autopilot up there as one of the easiest and best to use. As long as the car can see lines, it'll drive for you and it'll do pretty good. And while I personally don't think that full self-driving is currently worth the $12,000, if you are into like bleeding edge self-driving tech where the car will actually take you from point A to point B, do like city streets and stoplights and stop signs and all that stuff, then you really can't get that from anyone else besides Tesla. Like all the other ones, you need to be on very specific roads that are like marked, like predetermined, or they only work on the highway. So if you want that bleeding edge, full self-driving, Tesla's really the only way to go. But now for the big reason why I would not buy a Model Y right now, well, it's about to be outdated. Just like the Model 3, the Model Y refresh is coming, and it's looking like it's going to follow the same release schedule as the 3. So available in Europe and Asia in Q4 of this year, and in North America in Q1 of next year. And pretty much everything we saw that came to the new 3 is gonna come to the new Y. So a redesigned front and rear, interior lighting, steering wheel, new seats, ventilated seats, new wheels, and just, it's a lot. It's getting to a point that 
where I guess so many people were asking and so many people were just saying that they weren't going to put in orders until the new one came out, that Tesla sent out some form of an announcement saying that a new Model Y was not coming to North America this year. Which is funny because I believe they released the new Model 3 in North America on like January 2nd of this year. And like I said, the Y is going to follow the three. So yeah, it might not come out this year, but it's going to come out uh, two days after into the new year. And well, I mean, that's technically not this year, so they wouldn't be lying. And before you ask if any of the new features are interesting to you, I just wait. The end of quarter and even end of year discounts are only going to get better as we get closer to the refresh Y releasing. So unless you need it right now and you don't care about any of the new features, I'd wait. And who knows, maybe you waiting and then deciding that you don't want the new one ends up getting you like a crazy good inventory discount. Remember how crazy the old Model 3 discounts got right before the new one came out? But yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you waiting for the new Model Y codenamed Juniper? Or are you waiting for bigger discounts on the current Model Y? If you are new around here and you wanna see more Tesla related stuff in your YouTube feed, then feel free to subscribe. I'd appreciate it. If you agreed with any of the reasons that I mentioned in this video, then feel free to drop a like, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.